Welcome to Math 154. This is Lesson 1, Part A, Section 6.1, Angles. An angle is defined as a set of points determined by two rays or half lines, L1 and L2, having the same endpoint O. An angle can also be considered as two finite line segments with a common point. L1 is the initial side, L2 the terminal side, and point O is our vertex of the angle. Now, now, L2 starts on top of L1 and then rotates either clockwise or counterclockwise. The direction and number of rotation L2 makes before stopping is not restricted. Now, if two angles have the same initial and terminal sides, they are called coterminal. Now, since all of our angles will have the same initial side, we really only concern ourselves with the terminal side. A straight angle is an angle that can, oh, those are the angles that can marry in all 50 states. <laughs> That's a little humor there. All right, really. A straight angle is an angle whose sides lie in the same straight line but extend in opposite directions from its vertex. I think commonly known as a 180 degree angle. That's, that's not rocket science there, is it? We use a rectangular coordinate system, the, the Cartesian plane, and place all, all of our angles in what's called standard position. Now, since they are all in standard position, we really don't have to talk about it that much, but we still will. That's what we do in math. We talk about the vertex of the angle is placed at the origin, and the initial side, L1, is placed along the positive x-axis, and it doesn't move, and then L2 is sitting on top of it. If L2 is rotated counterclockwise direction, then the angle is positive. If L2 is rotated in the clockwise direction, then the angle is considered a negative angle. An angle is called a quadrantal, and I doubt if I'm pronouncing that properly, but we'll have to live with it. It's a quadrantal angle if its terminal side lies on the coordinate axis, either the positive or negative x and y axis is what we mean by that. These are your 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degree angles. There's an infinite number of them, um, but they again are called the quadrantal angles. Or quadrantal? Eh, I need an English major to help me here. One unit of measurement for an angle is degrees. An angle in standard position attained by making one revolution in the counterclockwise direction measures 360 degrees, and we write it as, well, 360 degrees. Again, not earth-shattering. It's one rotation around the circle is 360. Here's our first problem of the semester. Find two positive coterminal angles and two negative coterminal angles for theta equal 55 degrees. Well, all of our angles start in standard are in standard position, so the initial side is on the terminal, or is along the positive x-axis. Now, the terminal side here is going to be at 55 degrees. If I want another one that looks just like it, I add 360 degrees to it. That's 415 degrees. When you look at it, you can't tell the difference between a 55-degree angle and a 415-degree angle. They look exactly the same. Now, if I want another coterminal, I add 360 to 415, and I can come up with an infinite number of these. Just keep adding 360. And then if I want negative coterminal angles, I simply subtract 360. So 55 degrees minus 360 is negative 305, and 305, negative 305 minus another 360 is negative 665 degrees. So 55 degrees, 415 degrees, 775 degrees, negative 305 degrees, negative 665 degrees are all coterminal. And there's an infinite number of angles that are coterminal to 55 degrees. Let's do it again. Find two positive and two negative coterminal angles if theta is equal to negative 100 degrees. And I'm, I'm going to stop here and say theta is just a Greek letter that we use to represent any angle. In algebra, we use x and y. In geometry and trigonometry, we use Greek letters. So theta, beta, gamma. We just You can pick your favorite Greek letter. Uh, I'm going to go with theta here. Again, all I'm going to do is add and subtract 360 here. Add 360 a couple times, subtract 360 a couple times. So 260 degrees, 620 degrees, negative 460 degrees, negative 820 degrees, all look exactly like negative 100 degrees. You can't tell them apart. Now, a right angle is half of a straight angle and has a measure of 90 degrees. Again, this hopefully is not the first time you've heard of a right angle. Now, an angle is acute. You probably used to say that an angle was acute if it was less than 90. But we've got to be a little tighter with our definition. 
uh, because if we say less than 90, that would include negative angles. And negative angles, while less than 90, are not acute. So we say that an angle between 0 and uh, 90 degrees is acute. Now, obtuse angles, you probably used to say it's greater than 90. But no, that would include 300 degrees, 210 degrees, and again, while bigger than 90, they're not obtuse. So we say the angles that are between 90 and 180 degrees are obtuse. Now here you notice I use theta and beta. You can use any Greek letter to represent these angles. Pick your favorite Greek letter or whatever it might be. You may not have a favorite Greek letter. Well, that's fine too. Complementary angles. These are very nice angles because they complement each other. Okay, that's not it. Uh, two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Two positive angles, I should say, that add up to 90 degrees are complementary. Supplementary angles two positive angles that add up to 180 degrees. Uh, we still have students who get those confused. You've been, you probably have seen this since forever, complementary and supplementary. Well, C comes before S in the alphabet, and 90 comes before 180 on the number line. If you need to use that, go ahead. Just don't tell anyone. This includes part A of lesson one. Uh, you can start on the online homework for lesson one, or you can watch part B of lesson one for another exciting lesson. Thank you.